Fan Fam, we are live and we're having one of these conversations I love because these are the kind of conversations you really have with your friends. Today, we're undefining the traditional view of what a family looks like after recent articles have come out highlighting the modern ways people are redefining their families. My next guest, Louis Van Amstel, is a three-time world champion ballroom dancer and choreographer for the hit Disney Plus series, Dancing with the Stars. Louis says that he always dreamed of having a family of his own. And when he met his husband, Josh Lancaster, they made that dream come true, building their family of four through foster care. Take a look. I was born and raised in Europe. And all this time living in Europe, I thought I wanted to have my own biological children. But then I moved to the United States and started doing Dancing with the Stars in 2005. I thought the idea of having children did not fit into my life anymore. I thought I would never be a parent. In 2010, I met my husband. And in 2014, we moved in. That's when we discussed not only marriage, but also kids. But by this time, I'm in my 40s. So right after we got married, we started discussing adoption. First came Daniel in 2019. It took us nine months. Then in 2020, we started the process again. And nine months later, I kid you not, we adopted our son, Jonathan, and both our sons we adopted at 10 years old. If you are thinking about adopting, please do. It is the best thing that will happen to you. Why? Because you'll make a difference in the child's life. Dan Van, please help me welcome to the show, Louis Van Amstel! <laughs> welcome! So nice to oh, meet you, and thank, thank you for having me on your show. Of course! Okay, Louie, you're, even when you're not dancing, you glide walk. Look at you glide oh, through that, there. Is that it? That posture, the everything. Well, I've been doing it since the age of 10, so that's what, 10 years? No. 10. <laughs> 40 and a half years of dancing, oh, so. Oh, wow. Yes. It's magical. You know, we feel we know so much about someone when we fall in love with him on TV, and we did that with you. Uh, and then I started to hear your real story, your family story. And you mentioned the age of 10. That's the age your sons were. Yes. When you adopted them. Yes. 10. 10 years. Yes. When by choice. By choice. Yes. When you started to explore adoption and certainly older children, I am sure you heard the stereotypes. I'm sure you heard the yes. people who say, why not an older child? They all, everyone wants the baby. I guess when you either can't produce your own biological children, then, oh, let's adopt a baby. So it feels as close to biological as possible. And that is the one we wanted to change yeah. and say, yeah, but what about three, four years of diapers, <laughs> sleepless nights? <laughs> ah. No, I like traveling. And with my lifestyle with Dancing with the Stars, or, I mean, it, I like traveling. Yeah. I'm from Europe and I love going back. My husband loves it too. So we love traveling. So we thought, well, why don't we adopt older children yeah. And that was also easier because everyone wants the babies, but the older children in foster care, 500,000 of them are looking to be adopted. So we thought it actually, we were selfish, we thought, by adopting older kids because it fits with our needs. With your needs. You know, I, I grew up, you know, there's a show, every Wednesday they did Wednesday's Child in the States. You know, That's how we got both of our children. That's how you got both of your children. Because so often on Wednesday's Child, we would see older children highlight it. Because to your point, somewhere around 50%, according to the pre Q research poll, of children who are adopted are under the age of five. And so there was special attention always given to children yes. who were older. Yeah. What did you and your husband discuss to prepare you to bring in a 10-year-old? Because by 10, some would say you kind of know who you are, especially when you've been a part of a system. Well, I don't think you can always, any you cannot be prepared. Yeah. But we had to go, so when you become a foster parent to adopt, you have to go through training. Yeah. We were actually trained to be parents. Now there's no rule book, there's no manual, but I would say anyone that is pregnant, 
biologically pregnant, you need to go through these classes. You learn a lot. You can be prepared for Where it Where were you all. four years ago? I would have gone through some of these classes. And I need them now. <laughs> Well, we had to go through all this training with professors and you talk about all these things. And that's when you learn also that babies can come with more trauma than older children. So that's what I wanted to get to because Daniel was the first child, 10 yes. years old at the time in 2019. And then a year later, uh, Johnny was adopted in 2020. And you talk about the trauma, again, people assume that an older child would come in, but that is not a guarantee. You can have trauma at any point in your life. Not a guarantee. And when you, uh, so we went to a website, any state has a website, it was Heart Gallery of Colorado, Heart Gallery of Nevada, where our kids are yeah. from, and you see thumbnails of the kids, literally window shopping. You click on the kid that you like, that you say, oh, that could be my son or daughter. And then you get the letter afterwards, and that we say that's the letter where they want to scare you off. I'm looking at them right now. When you yeah. first laid eyes on Daniel. Yeah, don't make me cry. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing it. That whole process is just going as a flash through my head. It's worth it. It is worth it. So we met him in a park, in a public place, end of March, 2019. And you see that kid walk around, failed adoption, separated from his biological family. Oh. oh. We held it together. But the moment that meeting was over, we sat in the car. We, ah. oh my gosh, we knew. You knew. That's our child. Ah. And don't, I can't swear, <laughs> but you touch my child. <laughs> you touch my children, it doesn't matter because they're mine. Oh. Biological or not. They are yours. And this is really the message for people that are fearful that maybe an older child might not really feel like your child. It's a decision. And when we saw the thumbnails of both of our children, yeah. we knew. And the letter, we call it another word, but I'll call it the scare off letter. They want to scare you off because they want you to be prepared yeah. that you take on everything that comes with the child. And that, that letter only solidified, wow. we want that child. Okay. These children, yeah. 500,000 kids in foster care. Yeah. Until 18, then they go on the street with, I don't know, $100 and a backpack, and, and you're on your, own. on your own. 